Ghana is a strategic location for South Africa um, and you have the sectors in which South African corporates um, are doing business. Ghana is literally in the centre of the world and I think being a launch pad for the ECOWAS region, having a base in Ghana is sensible. Ghana because Ghana offered a very good opportunity with respect to Anglophone Africa and as you can see political stability is a very key factor when any investor is considering investing in another country. The long-term perspective of the Ghanaian economy was viewed by Sanlam as strong and good enough for business in the future. Ghana being a resource-rich country is, is a good destination. There has been a significant um, investment um, by South African and Ghanaian corporates. You do know that we have over 200 South African companies currently doing business and according to your GIPC report, um, South Africa is currently the fifth largest global exporter for Ghana and the third largest FDI. South Africa is the biggest foreign direct investor into Ghana from Africa. Historically, it has been in the extractive industry, mostly gold mining. Um, but in recent times, it has extended into services. Paul Ghana was established in 2006 by the Pro Property Group in South Africa and SNIT, which is the pensions regulator in Ghana and SIC Insurance Limited, based on the uh, need for professional property management services in Ghana. Sanlam is the biggest insurance group on the African continent and in most markets we are, we are number one. The Sanlam group has had over 100 years of insurance experience and Sanlam has actually been in Ghana many years before 2017. And specifically in 2017 was the year Sanlam acquired Saham. And so what we are hoping to achieve in the Ghana market is to continue our strong double-digit growth so that we will be among the top three players in the Ghana market. So Goldfields is an international uh, mining company with operations in six countries, uh, with headquarters in South Africa. Um, we came into Ghana in 1993 uh, when the company bought into the state, the then state gold mining company. Uh, which formed the Takwa Gold Fields or Takwa Mine. In 2011, we completed the purchase of the Daman Mine as well. You have from our mining industries to your energy industries, um, the railway rolling stock, um, pharmaceuticals, healthcare. Um, I just came from Kolebu um, Teaching Hospital, where we had South African plastic surgeons that are currently doing a project, the Operation SMILE project. So there's a lot of investment um, into the industry, a lot of collaboration between South Africa and Ghana. Real estate and construction, that is yet another area. In the gold mining space, you have Newmont here, the number one. You have Us Gold Fields here, you have Anglo Gold Ashanti. These are the top 10 uh, gold mining companies, all uh, resident in this country. I think that's uh, you know, a big testimonial to the country that, you know, big business can actually come and work and thrive over here. In the modern era, uh, trade and political relations between Ghana and South Africa reaches back 30 years. Relationship between the two countries is vital, not just for trade and economic uh, reasons, but for all kinds of transfer of knowledge, know-how, etc. Uh, starting from the core service of our property management, we have grown exponentially throughout the years, both from the service provision perspective and also our clientele. From the initial 20 to 30,000 square meters under management, we have grown currently to nearly 200,000 square meters under management. In 2022, we recorded growth of 92% of our revenue. In 20, they just ended 2023 year, we recorded growth of about 86%. The year 2022 was the year inflation rate around the time was a little over 30%. The year ended with an inflation of about 54.1%. But this was the year Sanlam rebranded in Ghana to show confidence in the Ghanaian economy because we saw 
if you like the post-COVID uh, economy of Ghana, more like a short term, and we believe that Ghana was going to recover. Not to say that we don't have challenges, we do, but it's overall been positive. The mining code is set, so it provides guidance to you as to what to expect when you're coming to invest in Ghana. The companies that are showing resilience and that are able to withstand the economic pressures here are those that have got a regional presence and they're able to say, well, we're not doing terribly well here at the moment. We hope that the cycle changes at some point. But while we're taking a bit of a beating here, we're able to do well in the markets around us. So you have all our uh, major banks. You've got Stanbic Bank that's here, F&B, um, OPSA banks, um, MTN, of course, uh, telecommunications. We also have ICT now. Um, our Onyx has also invested in the data services center. From leasing of motor vehicles to petroleum products to manufacturing of chemicals to agriculture, uh, we have a presence across these sectors. Both Nissan and Volkswagen, although German and Japanese, um, take all of their support, technical know-how and skills from South Africa. So we have quite an influence in the new and we hope important growth of the automotive assembly sector. You have your ports, your Takaradi deep water port and your port at Tema as well. And this is yet an opportunity that we will leverage on in terms of our trade balance and trade relations as well. We have our South African corporate, TaloDB, that is invested in the railway infrastructure development and management of the Western Line in Ghana. So that is about approximately 270 kilometers of railway in the Western Line. GIPT has been immensely helpful. What we have received from them is a lot of support with respect to B2B matching and also guidance with respect to how the investment climate is. Our engagement state institutions in Ghana, I can talk about the GIPC and the National Insurance Commission, whom we have close relationship with, and so far it has been amazing. In Ghana, we have the Minerals Commission, we have the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources, naturally. We have GIPC that helps us. We do have the GRA and the Finance Ministry, Environmental Protection Agency. Those are the stakeholders we work with. We do get the support from GIPC for our investors and investment after K. So I continuously collaborate. There's initiatives that we have created to boost our respective economies with the visa waiver you have Ghanaians and South Africans, people with ordinary passport holders can travel without a visa for up to 90 days. And the feedback that I receive from our South African Airways is that just the period in December, we had more than 1,700 Ghanaians traveling to South Africa just for the festive season and for tourism. And respectively, we had a lot of South Africans coming to Ghana to come and attend the Afro culture and other festivals in Ghana as well. I think it's been amazing with the recent no visa requirement to travel to South Africa. I think it's, it's one of the best things that I have seen has happened between Ghana and, and, and South Africa. And I think that that has provided a lot of opportunity for the Ghanaian South African relationship to even be more stronger going forward. Ghana offers many opportunities being a developed country. Over the years we have gained a lot of experience particularly in the service sector and I believe that's the most prominent one and growing sector that any investor should consider at this moment. We see ourselves very much as part of the fabric of the institutions that give stability and certainty to investors. Um, South Africa, whether we like it or not, has made some significant advances compared to other African countries and has developed the internal capital to be able to reach out to the rest of Africa and invest in. So I think it makes sense for us to collaborate with each other. Uh, we call it a South-South co cooperation. Collaborate with each other because we understand each other. We know each other. We are the same people. We've reached a milestone. Uh, South Africa has now joined other 
eight nations on the preferential trade um, on the AFCFTA. Um, South Africa has joined the Guided Trade Initiative. From the 31st of January, we had um, South African goods coming into the Ghanaian market. So that is yet an opportunity and we'll use this opportunity then to ensure uh, regional integration and also creating uh, markets for South Africa and also collaborating on the value chains in all the sectors, the automotive industry, services um, and all the other sectors.